Hello, and welcome back for another Toasted Tale with me, Jim. I'm really happy you decided to join me today around the fireside. If, like me, you enjoy hearing stories, then you've come to the right place. I think there are interesting stories in every subject. They're just waiting to be found and shared. In this podcast, we're going to take a random subject and use it as a seed to do some research for one short hour. And in that time, I'm going to do my best to find a story within that I and you will hopefully find enjoyable. So, let's bring in the subject randomizer, give it a spin, and see what today's topic will be. Okay, so today it's landed on the insect family Bombaliidae. Now, just for clarity, I'm not an expert on the Bombaliidae family. And before today, I'd done very little research on these insects. I'm just a guy who likes finding interesting stories and learning as much as I can along the way. So as not to keep you all waiting around while I go off and do my busy work doing the research, I've already done it. And with the uh, power of podcast editing and the fireside, we can get right into the story now. So I think it'd be best to do a bit of groundwork to begin with. It certainly helped me when I was looking into the Bombalia Day. Entomology is the study of insects. Throughout its history, more than one million different species of insect has been described to date. They are the most abundant group of animals in the world, and live on almost every habitat. Insects have lived on the Earth for more than 350 million years, and entomology is crucial to our understanding of human disease, agriculture, evolution, ecology, and biodiversity. If you're someone who, either professionally or in a more amateur setting, studies insects and are fascinated by them, then chances are you're an entomologist. And it's these men and women who have documented and noted down doing their own research and putting them into books, the study of insects that we know today. And people have been using, interested in, or studying insects for thousands of years. There are cave paintings from 13,000 BC, depicting bees and how they lived around the early humans. We also have jewellery from early civilizations, from around 1800 to 1700 BC, depicting bees, And we also know of early beekeeping being developed in ancient Egypt. I think one early conclusion we can draw is that we've always liked the humble bumblebee. Later examples too, in 1247 AD, the Chinese lawyer Sun Tzu wrote a textbook on criminal investigations called The Washing Away of Wrongs. In this book, Tzu recounts the story of a murder near a rice field. Investigators suspected the murder weapon was a sickle, a common tool used by rice farmers. But how could the murderer be identified when so many workers carried these tools? The local magistrate brought all the workers together and told them to lay down their sickles. Though all the tools looked clean, one quickly attracted hordes of flies. The flies could sense the residue of blood and tissue invisible to the human eye. When confronted by this jury of flies, the murderer confessed to the crime. A little later on, where entomology was becoming more established, volumes were released like the one of Samuel Purchas, A Theatre of Political Flying Insects, which was published in 1657 started bringing the science from just a very niche group of people to the wider audiences. It was not until slightly later volumes by people like Johannes Godatius that we were able to start seeing the inclusion of illustrations in these books, a feature of entomological works that so often captures attention. The monochrome images in Jonathan Godatius's of insects published 1682, were printed from careful copper etchings made by Mr. F. P. Coloured pictures started appearing in books in such volumes as 
Metamorphosis Insectorium Serenamensium by Maria Sevilla Merian, which was published in 1705, and Schiffmetterling's Cabinet für Kinder by Christian Friedrich Vogel in 1821. In these books, the images really pop with colour, and you can get a crazily intimate look at the patterns and details of the insects that were inspected. A little more on Vogel's work. This book was made for children, and was a guide not only to various species of European butterflies, but also to catching, keeping, and displaying their own specimens. Because at the time, entomology and further study of the natural world was becoming more and more popular as a hobby for young people. And so, what would these young entomologists see if they were to look at the Bombaliidae? Well, they are a large family of flies, comprising of hundreds of different types of insects. Their common name are bee flies or humble flies, and the adults they generally feed on nectar and pollen, which of course makes them very important pollinators for nature. Now, as I said, It's a very large family of insects, and they range in size, from the very small, which are about 2 millimeters in length, to the very large flies with a wingspan of some 40 millimeters. And just to give you an idea of how a lot of these species of this insect look, their wings are in a charismatic, flung back style, so the traditional look that you see when looking at maybe a fly or that type of insect. Also, they would have a spectacularly long proboscis, which is the elongated mouth part, which is typically tubular and is used for sucking up their food. And it's been adapted, evolved throughout the years, to be specialist for such plants as the Laprosia species, with its long, narrow floral tubes. And unlike butterflies, Bee flies, they hold their proboscis or mouth straight and cannot retract it, whereas some butterflies can kind of curl it up into kind of like a very intricate kind of spiral. Now, most Bombaliidae superficially resemble bees, and this is why they have accordingly been given the name of the bee fly. And the reason they do this could be argued that it is a form of Batesian mimicry. Now, Batesian mimicry is where a harmless species have evolved to imitate the warning signals of more harmful species. And this is to afford the adults some protection from predators, and uh, maybe give them enough time to escape from dangerous situations. So in this circumstance, if you don't want to be stung, you're going to avoid all things that look like a stinging insect like a bee. Despite what we do know, the Bombaliidae is still one of the most poorly known species of insects. And that's in direct contrast to how rich we know that species is. And why is this? Well, it's believed that the Bombaliidae are much less likely to visit flowering plants in urban parks or suburban gardens. And so get a lot less attention by the general public and the scientific community as well. Before we go too far ahead uh, to this point, I just wanted to point out how cool I think the Batesian mimicry is. It really shows the intelligence of evolution for a species who's maybe not as well equipped to develop in a way where they can use a strength from another species and the reaction that strength has on other predators to better protect yourself. And while I was doing this research, I was thinking, oh my goodness, well, we kind of do that as humans, don't we? In a much better way, our brain allows us to evolve throughout our lives, and so we are able to look around in society and at people who are more well-rounded than us or more skilled in a certain way, and... We can see what they do, and how they affect the world around them, and we can mimic them. We can find out how they win, and how they don't lose, and do those things. So, in nature, 
naturally, Batesian mimicry exists and protects thousands of species. But us humans, we're able to do a form of that, a more advanced form of that, by using our intelligence to work out how to solve our weaknesses, how to accentuate our strengths, which of course adds up to our own development and the development of everyone around us. I do apologise for the slight sidetrack, but it did strike me as worth mentioning. But I think what is also important is understanding why we should know about bugs and insects like the Bombalia Day. Like, why do people devote whole careers and lives to learning about them? Well, without insects, our lives would be vastly different. They pollinate many of our fruits, flowers and vegetables. We would not have much of the produce that we actually enjoy and rely on without the pollinating services of insects. Not to mention honey, beeswax, silk, and other useful products that insects provide. They also are very important as primary and secondary decomposers. Without insects to help break down and dispose of wastes, dead animals and plants would accumulate in our environment and it would be very messy indeed. So thank you insects, thank you bugs for doing the dirty work that helps keep the world spinning and also for cleaning up after ourselves. And for those with an interest in the insect world and maybe learning a bit more about the Bombalia Day, go outside with a magnifying glass and observe. Watch them live their life and enjoy. Thank you so much for spending time with me today around the fireside. I really enjoyed learning a little bit more about the Bombalia Day. I've never really looked too much into insects, but it's quite fascinating how many people are fascinated by them and how valuable they are to us. I also really liked how this whole family of insects mimic the more dangerous bee. Uh, so as to almost protect themselves through association. I thought that was really cool. If you like listening to this podcast and want to be told when new episodes are released, then following me on Twitter at Podcast Tale is where you can get those updates. That's where I put all new episodes and also anything else I find interesting. So follow me at Podcast Tale for more. And if you'd like to join me again for the next story around the fireside, then I'll be back here every Tuesday and Thursday at 6pm GMT. Your company will of course be greatly welcomed. I hope you all have a lovely rest of day, and I will speak to you all again soon for another Toasted Tale by the Fireside.